it's been a bit of a challenge, amen. Uh, there's been a, a lot of a lot of things, a lot of uh, emotions and things like that, and it's uh, it's funny how everything just kind of ties together. Because you see, when I was preparing this message this week, it, it was just interesting to me because I was just I started out just being really aggravated. Amen. Anyone ever just been real aggravated? All right. I can promise you guys one thing, all right? I will babble on all day. I'm going to need a little help from you guys this morning, okay? It's been, it's been a long morning, okay? I didn't even get all my coffee down, amen? Uh, so i got to keep myself awake, so I just keep talking, amen? No, no one else? No, it's fine. Um, but I got aggravated with this, and, and I know we've all been there and stuff like that. And the thing that was aggravating to me the most is, the most aggravating thing to me is when you see a problem, and you see a solution, but you can't fix it. Amen? I'll give you a good example. Alright? You're walking through Walmart and you see some kid playing with something he shouldn't be playing with. Amen? We all know what's going to solve that problem. Amen? Laying a hand swiftly like the word says. But you just can't fix the problem. I'm just but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Like, there's so many things in this world, and, and the reason I get aggravated, I don't know I joke and stuff like that, but the reason I get so aggravated is I see all these problems that we as Christians and my family and my loved ones and stuff, they face day in and day out and day in and day out, and you can see it on them. You can see the trouble in their eyes. You can see the heartbreak in their, in their lives. You can see the struggles in their families. You can see all these things, and it's like, man, there's, like, there's this big solution, and you know where it is, but you just can't fix the problem, amen? It seems like sometimes we try to take one step forward and we take two steps backwards. We try to try to do the right thing and it seems like everything just begins to go wrong. We, we didn't make the right decisions. We choose the right options. We do all these things and it seems like everything goes backwards on us sometimes. Amen? Am I the only one this morning? You see, and this is the most frustrating thing because I, I see the problem and I even see it in my own life. And I'm like, Lord, I got, I'm, I'm doing everything you tell me to do. I'm reading the word. I'm doing all these things. And it's like, if I could just get like, you know, a couple extra steps in today. Y'all got those watches. You try to get the extra steps. Amen. <laughs> Lord God, if I could just reach my step goal today, that'd be great. And it seems like you can never make that extra step. And so I got frustrated about it. And God began to reveal to me the, the story. And, uh, and I, it humbled me a lot. And it was this thing that I was just like, okay, God. I see what you're saying. So this morning, when I when I preach this word, whenever it brings forth, that God revealed to me just all of this stuff and in my aggravation that there can still be peace, no matter the troubles. Amen. So this morning, I'm going to be all over the place in Daniel chapter six. So I apologize, Sister Cindy. Just uh, as long as you've got all of Daniel chapter six in there, I'll be somewhere in that range. Amen. Um, if you have your words, I want us to turn to Daniel chapter six. Many of us probably know this word this morning. Many of us have probably heard it or heard it preached and all these things. And uh, I just want to kind of go over it again because God revealed this to me. And uh, Daniel chapter 6, um, in this story, it started out with a man named Dan. Amen. I know it's a surprise. Amen. But Daniel was a, uh, a man that truly, truly loved God. Amen. Uh, the word says it's so much for that he, he went in and he was revealing dreams and things like that for his king. And he was doing all these things. He was part of like what they considered like the high priests uh, underneath the king. So he had a lot of say in what happened. Uh, I think it said he was one of like, basically there was like four ranking members and he was one of those. And uh, he was in there and uh, the king Darius was his name. And he really, really loved and respected Daniel. He also loved and respected the fact that Daniel served a God, amen, that was the king of all kings and the Lord of lords. And he knew that Daniel respected his God more than he respected him as king. And uh, so anyways, the other people that were around him, his friends and his colleagues, uh, didn't like it. And so we're going to start in chapter 4. And it says, Then the presidents and the princes sought to find an occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find none occasion nor fault. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. In verse 5 it says, And then said these men, We shall not find any occasion against Daniel, except find it against him concerning the law of his God. So I want us to think about that for a minute. These people were trying to find any problem they could with Daniel. Does that sound like anybody we know? 
Amen. We serve a full-time enemy. And he's going to find every problem we got, and he's going to try to bring it out on us. Amen? And so these people, though, they were looking, and they were looking, and they were looking, and the word says that they couldn't find anything wrong with him. Amen? Could you just imagine no one being able to ever find a problem with you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> listen, if y'all look, you're going to find. So I just, listen, just is not look around, okay? Listen, I understand that I've got problems. Amen? But the word says that these men... Daniel was so in tune with God, amen, just imagine this, he was so in tune with God, he was so in love with his relationship with God, that these men could not find a single fault against him. That to me sounds like somebody that's doing everything right, amen? He's doing everything that he can, he's following God, he's obeying him, he's doing all these things, but then they said the only thing that we can find a problem with him is, he loves God too much. Man, wouldn't that be a good problem to have? You would think. So the word says that Daniel went on and, and he loved God and he loved all these things. And so the, the, the people, they came up to the king and they said, King Darius, he says, listen, we want you to do something. We think that this is the most, the, this is the most important thing. And the, the word even says that they went into there and they were praising the king. Amen. Anyone ever have that person in their life that just goes up and they just, you know, suck up a lot? <laughs> I'm just trying to find the best way to phrase that. They just, they really just, you know, get in. They're like, oh, you listen, we've all had that person who goes up to the boss and be like, even when they make a bad decision, you're just doing so good. Amen. You know, just like, I just appreciate everything you do. I appreciate you making us stay a couple hours late today. Amen. Like, you've got that one person that always does that. Amen. We know they're looking for a promotion. Amen. And uh, so anyways, they go to the king, they praise him, they do all these things, and they said, King, what we need you to do is we need you to sign a decree that says for the next 30 days, nobody is allowed to bow to any other god or king or anything other than you. They said sign it to, I believe the word says they sign it to the, to the uh, law of the Persians and stuff like that to where even if you sign this decree that you, the king, cannot even change the law because it should stand for 30 days. And he says... That doesn't sound like a bad idea. Amen? You ever get, you know, when your kids really want something, they come up and they're really nice. Basically, that's exactly what they just did. They just said, man, you're just so great. And so they trick him into signing this decree that says that he cannot, no one can bow to another king. No one can uh, pray to another god. No one can do anything other than serve King Darius for the next 30 days. And King Darius, in his thinking and not, like, thinking about what he was doing, says, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Amen? I mean, who... Who wouldn't like to be like, you know, top dog for 30 days, amen? Can't nobody do nothing without going through me, amen? Y'all know that feel good, like be, be president for a month, amen? No, I wouldn't. Uh, <laughs> but, so he says, yeah, that's a good idea. And what I love is right here, in verse 9 it says, Wherefore King Darius, he signed the writing and the decree. And we're going to go to verse 10. It says, Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed and went into his house, and in his window began being opened in his chamber towards Jerusalem. He kneeled unto his knees three times a day and prayed and gave God thanks before his God as he had done aforetime. You see, in verse 10, the problem is sometimes we see a problem in the church and we have this issue going on. And we're like, wow, I can't believe that everybody's against the church. Yet we're not full time serving God. Amen. I want you guys to understand this. You see, it's not enough just whenever people are looking and when there is a problem to serve God. Amen. It is not enough. It says that he had done this day in and day out of four times. Three times a day, he made it a point that he was going to serve God. And yet he said then, even when he knew that it was wrong in the eyes of man, that it was still good in the eyes of God, that he was going to continue to do it. He wasn't looking for a show. He wasn't looking for anything other than to be faithful to his God. Amen. Y'all follow along with me. It says in verse 11, it says, Then these men assembled and found Daniel and praying and making supplication before his God. You see, when the enemy looks for a problem, he's going to find a problem, no matter how big or how small the problem may be. If the only problem that he can find is that you are praying to your God, amen, and he tries to, to push that out on you, amen, then praise God, that's the only problem he can find. You see, Daniel, he got in this issue, and he went in, and he says, I don't care if I die for what I believe in, I'm going to serve my God. 
The word says that if you did not do this, if you did not uh, uh, obey this decree, that they would throw them into a den of lions. Amen? How many ever seen a lion? They're huge. Okay? Like, you see them on TV, it does zero justice. If you go to the zoo and they're like right up against the glass, it is this huge like 200 and something pound animal and it is scary. Amen? If the glass was not an inch thick, I probably would not be standing there. Like, I mean, it is a terrifying experience. But they had multiple lines in these dens, and back then they would keep them very hungry. Amen? The only way to make something eat is for it to be hungry. So they had these lines in this den. They said, if they do not obey this word, then we're going to throw them into this den of lines, and they're going to be killed. And so Daniel, he says, it's okay. I'll just go serve my God anyways. And I, it's funny what happens next. is when, when we choose to serve God, the enemy is going to bring doubt in our mind each and every single day. Because even when Daniel was still faithful to God, and these people went and ratted him out to the king, they went up to him and they said, Oh king, did you not say that nobody can serve another God? Amen. Here's where the trickery of the enemy comes in. Amen. Did you not say that you can't do all these things? Did you not say that all these things are not to be allowed? He said, yes, I did. And they said, well, your faithful servant, Daniel. Mm. You know what we saw him doing? In the verse 14, I, I, I love what verse 14 says. It says, then the king, when he heard these words, was sore displeased with himself. And he set his heart on Daniel to deliver him, and he labored till the going down of sun to deliver him. You see, even when things go wrong and the enemy comes against us, there's still somebody on our side. Even the king who had made the mistake and he had, he had messed up in this situation, he realized where he had went wrong. He realized that he had made a mistake that he could not reverse. The word says that, that he went in, he stayed up all night, and the, the word even goes on and says he fasted through the evening trying to find a way to save Daniel, and he realized he could not. So the word goes on and it says that he went up to Daniel, and he cried, and he says, Daniel, and basically he just said, I'm sorry. But he threw him into the lion's den. But I love what he says. He says, I pray that God that you serve and are so faithful to will deliver you from the mouth of these lions. And I love, love, love the faith that even the king had, not because of the faith that he had in God, but the faith that Daniel had in God was so strong that the king truly believed that God could save him. Amen? Man, just imagine if our faith was strong enough that the people around us began to believe in the faith that we had in God. Amen? Man, would we not change the world around us? I'm going to continue on. To get to my point here, and I promise you guys this is probably not going to be a very long sermon. Amen. I hope not. Because I just, it just really just, it's so straightforward and it's just, it's so amazing what our God could do. And in verse 20, so it says that, actually I'm going to start in verse 19. So the king, he woke up the next morning and said, in verse 19 it says, Then the king arose very early the next morning and went in haste unto the den of lions. And it says in 20, it says, And he came into the den and he cried, a laminated, uh, a la lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou serves continually able to deliver thee from the lions? And verse 21 says, Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God hath sent his angel and hath shut the mouths of the lions, that they have not hurt me for as much as before him innocency was found in me and also before thee O king have I done no hurt amen you see the king knew he had made a mistake he knew what was going on and Daniel in that lion's den he went down and he called to him and I could just imagine the joy in the king's voice when he yelled into that lion's den amen listen he wasn't walking into it that's for darn sure <laughs> but he yelled out he says Daniel he says are you okay and could you just imagine the sound of that voice of just saying I'm all right. The peace and the joy and the, and the, and the, the amazement in his voice. And he says that the angels of, the, of heaven have come down and they shut the mouths of the lions. Well, I want you to know it wasn't just the mouths of the lions they had to shut. Amen. They have some big old hands. Amen. <laughs> I mean, they're not hands. They're paws. But listen, 
That big is my face, all right? <laughs> Let's just be honest about the situation. I can just imagine Daniel going down in that lion's den, trusting and having faith in God. And he says, listen, it's a little cold. And one of them lions just coming up and being like my, my dog that gets on my last nerves. And just like, here, I'll leave with you. You know what I'm saying? Like, Lord, have mercy. But I could just imagine him going down there and just being like, wow, look how cool these things are. You know, that'd be me. If I knew they were going to, I'd be like, man, these are cool. <laughs> I mean, I should have rode one out. No. Um, yeah, yeah, this is where my mind goes. Y'all are going for that. Um, but he went down there and he says, my God has sent angels down. These animals have done no hurt on me. I'm fine. And he says, and, and, and for you, I, I have done no hurt. And in, in verse 23, it says, And the king was exceedingly glad, and he commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. You see, Daniel was in there, and in his faithfulness, he was, he was there. And he was okay. And you see, I begin to think about the story, and I begin to think about our lives and everything that we go through. And this is, this is where I got so aggravated, because it seemed like everything that you do, when you do it for the glory of God, amen, the enemy is going to come at you, and he's going to bring doubt, and he's going to bring fear, and he's going to bring all these things that are going to come against you. And I realized, like, man, that's so me. <laughs> right? I mean... It's like, if I can't, I can't win for losing sometimes, it feels like. It seems like no matter where I go, no matter what I do, there's always something that's going to rise up against me. I can have the best day ever, and I'm going to find something that's going to aggravate me, and it's just going to pick at me. And I begin to think about this, but Daniel, he sets the perfect example of what we should do instead. You see, everything was against him, even though everything he did was for God. Think about that for a minute. We think about, man, I just can't believe that happened. I can't believe this, that, and the other. And yet, he did everything perfectly for God. And he very well could have sat there and just said, God, why would you do this? God, why, if you knew what I was doing, would you allow this to happen? Amen? Starting to sound like any of us any time. Amen? Listen. If it ain't you, it's me. So that's fine. You just sit back and relax and enjoy my pity party. Amen? No. But I'm just telling you, like, if it's, if it's there and there's a problem, amen, sometimes I just get so aggravated. I'm like, God, why can't you just make this a little bit easier? But you see, even in the time when the enemy had come against Daniel, God had a plan to bring glory. Amen? And so Daniel, he went in there, and instead of complaining, instead of trying to do things his own way, amen, he trusted in God. We want to talk about doing things our own way. We live in a world of be your own person. Be your own self-help kind of deal. Amen? And it is the most aggravating thing. Listen, if you've got a problem and you just can't handle it, you know what you do. You're going to go out on Friday night and you're just going to forget about all your problems. Amen? Man, I've had a dollar for every time I hear, about, hear someone doing that. It's just like... It's so sad because we're filling our heart and our bodies with things that are not glorifying to God. And then when we wake up the next morning, it's still there. Amen. If you've got a problem, we've got, we've got something that will make you just feel good. You won't even have to worry about your problems. Why? Because you feel good. Or if, you, if you're upset, the best thing to do is just be angry and talk bad about them. Amen. Because it's going to make you feel better. We have a world that is surrounded by so much negativity and so many things that do not glorify God. And we wonder why we have so many problems. Could you just imagine if we were filled with a world that trusted in God and said, you know what, no matter what, we're going to serve and we're going to stand on the glory of God, amen, and that we're not going to worry about all these problems. Could you imagine a world where people around, instead of having problems and trying to deal with them, they gave them to God and they were gone? Could you imagine a world of just peace and love instead of just hatred and anger and bitterness? You see, Daniel... He lived in that world of anger and bitterness and all those things, but he was not of the world. Why? Because he had the peace that passes all understanding in his heart. He says, I know that my God will take care of me. And just like whenever I preached before with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, he says, I would rather die and serve my God. You see, we were talking about the other night, uh, I was talking with someone, and we were talking about it is better to live for God and die than it is to, to die not living for God in a sense. And I don't believe that just means in our physical realm, amen? 
When we're talking about dying, I'm talking about dying to our physical self, our self one, the lusts of our flesh, the things that we want, all these things that are around us. It means in a spiritual realm, amen, we should live for God and not live for this world. And that's a tough thing to do sometimes, amen? When God calls you to fast and you pass by McDonald's and they're just, they just open and they're cooking all that good food, amen? It, it, you know it ain't good, but it smells good. <laughs> Listen, when you fast and everything smells like you, you're, if you don't like Taco Bell, it still smells good. It's fine. If you, if you don't have that problem, just try fasting, amen? But Daniel here, he had everything going against him, yet he still stood on the foundation that God had given him. He loved God. He did not try to take matters into his own hands. And that is where most of the problem comes from. I know for myself, when I see a problem, and I know I can fix it, yet I can't fix it. Because I know that if I do fix it myself, there's just going to be more problem, amen? I have to let God take care of all of my problems. And that is where it is so hard for me sometimes to let go because I just I just know it's, like, it's just so simple. Amen? This is why my, my buddy at work, he coaches like six and seven year olds in soccer. That's not my cup of tea. Because if you're supposed to be kicking that ball and you're chasing a butterfly, amen? <laughs> I won't just get aggravated. I'm like, that bird is all going home. Absolutely not. No, I can't do this. Like, you know what to do. Just kick the ball. I don't care if you miss. But that's not my, that's not my patience, amen, okay? Listen, I know it's one of my, that's not my strong suit. But it's one of those things, it's like, you see a problem, you want to fix it, and you can't. Daniel saw a problem. He could have fixed the problem. He could have never went into the lines then if he would have just left, Amen. He could have been on the run and never had to see the mouth of the line and be like, you know what, God, I know you wouldn't want me to die. God, I know you wouldn't want me to go through these things because you wouldn't put me here to die. So if I run away, amen, all my problems are solved. You see, he could have justified his actions, but instead he just continued to trust God. And here's what I love, I love, I love about God. When you put your trust in God, Everything else works out. And here's what I mean. This is my favorite part of the story. Well, it's, <laughs> it's my favorite part of the story, but you know, it's also a little uh, morbid, all right? Let's just all calm down. Um, <laughs> so it says that Daniel comes out of the lines then. And I could just imagine all of those princes and all of those people standing there waiting to see a demolished Daniel whenever he was in the lines then. And when they heard his voice, there was not excitement in their voice. I could imagine there was fear in their eyes. I could imagine that there was anger in their hearts because these lines had not touched them. Because you see, the next thing that happened whenever Daniel walked out of the lines, then it says the king was just so excited to see him. You know, I'm sure he got up and he hugged him and he loved on him and he apologized, I'm sure. Amen? And then what happened, the king says to the princes, he gathers the princes together. And everybody who is associated with these princes... And it says that they threw them into the mouths of the, or into, into the, uh, the lion's den. And he says, uh, the king, uh, well, sorry, verse 23. It says, then was the king exceeding glad and commanded that they should take the Daniel up out of the lion's den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no manner of hurt was found upon him because he was the, he believed in his God. And verse 24 it says, and the king commanded and they brought these men which were accused, that accused Daniel and they had cast them into the den of lions. And he says, Them, their children, and their wives, and the lions had mastery of them. And break all of their bones in pieces, and everything, and every, or ever they came at the bottom of the den. Then the king Darius wrote unto all people and nations and languages that dwell in the earth, Peace be multiplied unto you. I make a decree that in every dominion of the kingdom men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and steadfast forever, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed and his dominion shall be unto the end. He delivered and uh, rescueth, and he worketh signs and wonders in heaven and in earth, who hath delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. 
And I'm going to say verse 28 for later. You see, what happened is, is the enemy had to watch the man that they had put into the mouth, into the den of lions, walk out of there victorious. Why? The word says he was saved. Why? Because he believed in his God. Amen. He believed that God was going to save him. So he said he walked out of the line. And the same thing that the enemy used to persecute Daniel was the exact same thing that destroyed the enemy. Amen. Amen. Could you just imagine if we just continue to believe in God and the same thing that the enemy uses to come against you begin to use against himself. Amen. Amen. The word says a house divided never stand. And the same thing that he is throwing against us that causes division is the same thing that will eventually tear his entire dominion and reign down upon the earth. Amen. He shall not ever be able to stand. And I love, love, love it here because it says that when he walked out, Daniel didn't come out with anger. He did not come out with bitterness. He came out with joy that God had delivered him from the mouths of the lions. And what happened was the enemy was then thrown into the den. Not just the enemy, anyone associated with the enemy. I feel bad for the kids, amen? But the kids had to go. The wives had to go. They all went in there. And what the word says is there was nothing left of them. It says every bone was broken and they were all in the bottom of the den. My God, when he delivers you out of the hand of the enemy, he does not just kind of deliver you or deliver you from the mean person. He completely delivers us from the hands of the enemy. There is nothing that he can do to come back at us. There is not going to be someone that grows up later is mad at us and gets their, their way with us then. No, there is nothing left because when God delivers you, amen, you are free. And the Bible says when we are free, we are what? We are free indeed. You see, Daniel that day, he was not just delivered from those princes. He was delivered from any chance of anything they ever had to have come against them, coming back from that anger and that bitterness that was once there. Amen? The enemy stood no chance, and everything was left at the bottom of a pit of just misery. One day, amen, when we are up in heaven, the enemy will be stuck in a pit of awful anger and misery and all these things and we won't ever have to deal with it again amen and that's why i like verse 28 you see when you trust in god when you believe in him and he delivers you verse 20 it says so this day this daniel prospered in the reign of darius and in the reign of cyrus and the persians when we trust in god when we give him everything we prosper this is, I know this is probably a bit similar, but just the same as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego a couple weeks ago. When they were brought out of the fiery pit, the word says that there was a decree made. The word says when Daniel was brought out of that, that lion's den, there was a decree made. When we stand on the truth that is our God, the enemy has no choice but to flee. People around us will see that there is no choice but to serve our God. There is nothing that is more important than serving our God and trusting in Him. So that leads me to my, kind of my question here is, I talked about this Wednesday night with the kids and whatnot, but why hold on to things that only hold you back? Because see, when the enemy comes against you, you need as much faith and as much strength as you can get. I could imagine for Daniel, even, even having the trust in God, it's got to be a little bit scary, amen, to think that there's a line down there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, shucks. <laughs> right? Or the kids going into the fire like, wow, that's fire. They've probably been burnt before. They realize this is probably not going to be fun. I could just imagine all these things running through their head. But to have that strength to stand on the rock of God. So why hold on to things that are only going to hold us back in those times when the enemy comes at us the strongest? Nothing too big or too little can stop the love of God and the faithfulness that God gives to us from reaching us. There's nothing that can stop the move of God. We might say we don't feel it because... We don't want to feel it at the time, or we try to turn our back on it, or whatever. But our God is always there, and He is always faithful. Just like Daniel was faithful to God, God was faithful to Daniel. 
So my question would be is, what is it that we are faithful to? And what is it that we are getting out of that situation? Just because the situation doesn't look good, if we're faithful to God, he's going to take care of everything.